Come out. Oh, Brother Danny, come on up here. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, the King of glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, come on now. Amen. No reason to stop. Amen. Praising God. Amen. As they sing that song, can't stop praising him. Amen. That should be your, that should be your normal. Amen. Is to, to magnify him that you can't stop praising him. Amen. Through the storms, through the trials, through the tribulations, I can't just stop praising him. Amen. He's been too good to me. Amen. And I thank God because he is the everlasting God. I'm thankful for this opportunity. Don't know when my time's already began. Amen. But that's all right. Praise be to God. Amen. I, I want to share with you something that God has put into my heart and my spirit over the past few days. And, uh, and I, th I feel like that it will bless you. As long as you have, if, as long as you've came with an ear to hear the, what the God has got to say to you, then, then you'll get what I've got to say. Amen. If you didn't come with an ear to hear, then I'm sure that I pray that God would anoint you here so you can hear. Amen. Praise God. But if you would, since you're all standing all over the house, if you open up the word of life and turn with me to the book of Nehemiah chapter 4. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4. This might be a little different, but <laughs> I just can't, can't get away from it. But in Nehemiah chapter 4, starting at verse 6, we're going to read just a few verses here. So in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6 says, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Samballot and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites <laughs> heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were wroth, or then they were very wroth, Verse 8, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Verse 9, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Amen. For the next uh, 13 minutes or so that I have left, I want to preach to you just one word. That one word is nevertheless. Amen. And you can fill in the blank. Amen. Because I've come here tonight to want to encourage this body, this congregation. Nevertheless, amen, I've got a mind to work. Nevertheless, I've got a mind to build for God. I, nevertheless, I've got a mindset that I want to be a witness for God. Nevertheless, when destruction may come my way, amen, i got a heart and a soul that wants to magnify the Lord. Nevertheless, whatever comes my way, amen, I've got to set a watch and I've got to pray, amen, and I've got to seek the face of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You may clap your hands all over this house. Amen. And as you clap your hands, amen, give God, amen, a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He alone is worthy of the highest praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you want to be seated. Amen. But I'm just so thankful for this opportunity. I began to think about, amen, all the things here about Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, the story here in the book of Nehemiah is so important. Amen. Because we find that the city of Jerusalem was tore down. It was destroyed, nothing but by the enemy. And in this setting of scripture, we find that hearts begin to be changed. We find that Nehemiah had a mindset about him that nevertheless, amen, no matter how Jerusalem was tore down and beat up, they were going to go amen, and repair the breaches. They were going to go and build back up the walls. Uh, amen. It was the city of the everlasting God. Uh, amen. That God was going to put his name there. Amen. So they settled a mind to work. But as we begin to find when the enemy began to hear, amen, that they were gathered together and that they had a mindset. You see, that's what the enemy does. Amen. The enemy doesn't just send not one person to come against you. Uh, amen. The enemy doesn't just uh, come against you with just one spirit of darkness. Uh, amen. It the enemy doesn't just come at you with just a couple of uh, uh, different kinds of situations and storms. Uh, amen. Then you may have uh, like finance problems. Uh, amen. You might face sickness uh, or, or uh, struggles of life. Uh, amen. But the things will come against you. It's not sometimes uh, one situation as we find here. We find, uh, amen, that Sam Ballot came. That was one issue. That was one enemy. But we find that Tobiah came. That was two enemies that came against or tried to come against 
against the work of God. And we find about the Arabians, uh, that's enemy number three. Uh, amen. And we find about the Ammonites, that's number four. Amen. And then we find about the Ashdodites. Uh, amen. We find here about five types of enemies. Uh, amen. That had a mindset because they were after God's people. Uh, amen. They knew that God's people were chosen. Uh, they knew that God's people were set a mindset to build. Uh, they had a mindset that they were going to let nobody take them off the wall. Uh, amen. That's what we ought to have, church. Uh, amen. When it comes on Wednesday, amen, it doesn't change. Uh, amen. When Thursday comes, it does not change. Uh, amen. When Friday comes, it does not change. Uh, amen. When Saturday comes, it does not change. Uh, amen. Whatever day of the week comes, uh, amen, we got to have a mindset, amen, that nevertheless, uh, amen, whatever comes my way, uh, amen, if sickness comes my way, Pastor Thomas, amen, I have settled it, amen, in my mind, uh, amen, that I'm going to praise my God and I'm going to magnify his name, uh, amen, if sickness comes my way, amen, and I get some kind of illness, uh, amen, I'm going to lift him up and give him praise. Uh, why? Because God is worthy of the praise, uh, amen, God is looking for somebody, uh, amen, that has a mindset to work, uh, God is looking for somebody that says, nevertheless, I will. Amen. God's looking for somebody. Amen. That would stand. Amen. When all the situations around you are putting you down. Amen. When things around you may seem like all hope is gone. Amen. When the enemy's coming against you and your finances are going down the tubes. Amen. When all the situations, amen, and the storms of life came to keep, keep just pounding on top of you. Amen. You have in your hand one thing, and that is the word of God. And in your other hand, you got a mind to build. Amen. You're not going to come off the wall. Amen. You're not going to come down for anything. Amen. But you're going to settle it in your heart and your mind and your soul. Amen. That I'm going to come to church. Amen. Every time that the doors are open. Amen. Nevertheless, God, I'm going to be faithful. Amen. And when the doors are open. Amen. I'm going to come in with a shout of praise. Nevertheless, Lord, if I can't even speak. God, Lord, I'm going to try to shout. Amen. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He didn't worry, but I believe he had a mindset that nevertheless, amen, he was going to praise God. Amen. And nevertheless, he was going to dance before the Lord. And then nevertheless, amen, he was going to keep on magnifying the Lord. Amen. Because he had that heart. He had the zeal. He had the mindset. Praise be to God. Amen. Job had a mindset that he was going to, amen, have a mind. Amen. Lord, though you slay me, yet I'll trust in you. Amen. Is that you, church? Amen. If though God slay me, amen, yet I'll trust in him because I know that God never fails. Amen. I know that God is a keeper of his word. Amen. And I know that God, amen, keeps his promises. Amen. Hallelujah. There are so many things that God does. Amen. There's so many things that God is going to do. Amen. There's so many things that we've only seen. Amen. Which is just a small glimpse. Amen. Of the things that God is going to do in our lives. Amen. But we haven't even begun. Amen. To really truly realize. Amen. What we got. Amen. Church, if we truly realized. Amen. What it was so important. Amen. To not give up. Amen. Why it's so important to not let go of the plow. Amen. Why it's so important to keep on building. Why it's so important. Amen. To have that mindset. Amen. That nevertheless less. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve the King of glory. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know where this old boy used to be. Amen. I was nothing but trash. Amen. I was nothing but trash. But I want to tell you something. Amen. God's all fit. Amen. To have a hand of mercy and love extended out to me. Amen. He changed my life forever. Amen. When I came into this place, you see, when you come into the house of God, chains begin to fall. Amen. Hallelujah. Walls become tumbling down. Amen. You leave. Amen. Not the same way that you came. Amen. If you come with a mindset to work. Amen. If you come with a mindset that nevertheless. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to get what I need in God. Amen. That's the kind of attitude. Amen. That's the kind of determination that we should all have. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a mind to build. God's got something for you. Amen. God's got something for this church. Amen. Hallelujah. I, you might not know what your plan and your purpose is, but that's okay. I didn't know either. Amen. When I came into this house of God almost seven years ago, I never knew what God's plan and his purpose was for my life and for my wife's life. I never knew. Amen. I didn't have an idea, but I settled it in my heart. Amen. Every service that I came, amen, I had to do a change for God was molding me. He was shaping me. He was making me. Amen. What he would have me to be. And I thank 
God. Amen. That he did that for me. Amen. Ain't you glad that God did that for you? But I want to tell you, God's not done. Amen. God's not done for you. Amen. God's got something greater. Amen. For you and your family. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. It is that mindset to build. Amen. There was a place. Amen. In Nehemiah chapter 6. Amen. That the, 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 these folks, these enemies, if you will. Amen. Wanted to get Nehemiah and them. Could you imagine? There they was. Amen. They had a sword to fight in one hand. Amen. And they had in their other hand, they was working. Amen. A mind to not give up. Amen. A mind to keep on building. A mind to keep on watching. A mind to keep on praying. Amen. A, a mind that says, God, Lord, I'm nevertheless, I'm not going to stop. God, you want us to build? God, Lord, I'm going to build. God, Lord, you want me to walk by faith? God, I'm going to walk by faith. God, Lord, you want me to see deeper? God, I'm going to look for deeper things. Amen. God, you want me to walk with you? God, I'm going to walk with you. God, Lord, you said you'd never leave me or forsake me. God, Lord, I got the assurance in you. God, Lord, that I will not fail as long as I hold to your nail-scarred hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, church, you will not fail. Amen. If you hold on to his nail-scarred hands, you will not fail. Amen. If you realize what you got inside of you. Amen. If you begin to realize, amen, that we have the spirit of the everlasting God. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, amen, you got greater in you than anything that this world has to offer. Amen. All you got to do is open your mouth and begin to speak a word of faith. Amen. It's just set simple. Amen. God gave us the ability to open our mouth. So I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to use it. Amen. And God gave me the ability to dance and run, so I'm going to dance and run. Amen. Hallelujah. I came into this place. I wasn't feeling all good either, Brother Sizemore. Amen. I wasn't feeling good for the past couple of days. Amen. Hallelujah. I believed. I had that mindset. I believed. I looked forward to Wednesday night. Amen. The enemy wanted to keep me home, but I had an attitude. And nevertheless, Brother Douglas, amen, I was going to go on to the house of God. Amen. I was going to be faithful to him. Why? Because God's faithful to me, and God is faithful to you. Amen. Not not only just tomorrow, not only today, but God is faithful every day of our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to be faithful and committed unto him. Amen. Nevertheless, 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 hallelujah, nevertheless, amen, when destruction comes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. When the word of God says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. When the word of God says that God is our refuge and he is our strength and he's a very present help in the time of trouble. I want to tell you there's a never less. Amen. That settles in my mind, in my heart, and my soul that I'm not going to give up. Amen. Because there's no reason, amen, to murmur or complain. But I have all the reason amen, to love and to magnify his name. I have all the reason to go the other mile. Amen. I have all the reason to press on a little bit further. I have all the reason, amen, to keep on keeping on. Amen. I have all the reason, amen, to look forward to that city who's making and pillar is God. Amen. Because our home is not this place. I have a mindset of nevertheless. Amen. Lord, whatever it takes, God, I'm going to serve you. God, Lord, whatever it takes. God, Lord, I'm going to keep on pressing on. Amen. I want to press through the dark times. I want to press through the good times. And even when time is up, amen, I want to press on. Amen. Hallelujah. Nevertheless. Amen. Nevertheless. All right. I've got a little bit of time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to tell you. Amen. It's time for the church to get it's settled in our mind. Amen. That nevertheless, amen, hallelujah, when somebody says to you, amen, it's not going to happen. Nevertheless, amen, I serve a God. Amen. I'm still going to serve him. Amen. What are you doing, Brother Denny? That promise ain't going to come. You know what I tell the devil? Get under my feet, you liar. Amen. Because God's word is enough. God's word is a promise. And that is something I can hold on to. Church, you can hold on, amen, to the promises of God. Amen. Nevertheless, nevertheless, nevertheless hallelujah amen with a mindset to build and a mindset to not give up amen hallelujah burn it in your heart and in your mind and in your soul amen to love God amen to serve him amen to love him amen to appreciate him amen God I love you God I thank you God Lord no matter what comes my way God Lord I want to serve you with all my heart God Lord in all my mind and all my soul 
Amen. Lord Jesus, God, Lord, I want to serve you. Amen. With everything that is in me. Hallelujah. If the promise never comes, if a miracle never comes, is that for you to give up? No. Amen. That's for you to just keep loving God that much more. Amen. Because, amen, he's a keeper of his word. Amen. When you cross over into glory land, you're going to not have no tears. You're not going to be no death. Amen. There's not going to be no sickness. There's not going to be no disease. Amen. He's a keeper of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise all over the house here tonight. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just wanted to encourage you. Hallelujah. There was a place in Nehemiah 6. Just really quick. There was a place called Oh No. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 6 that the enemy wanted to come. Amen. And take them to the plane called Oh No. Amen. Oh No. What I'm going to do. Amen. About my finances. Oh No. What am I going to do. Amen. I'm sick. Amen. Well, oh No. What am I going to do. Amen. They try to get Nehemiah to come off the wall to get him down to the plane of Oh No. Amen. That's what Satan wants to do to you. Amen. He wants you to get your mind off of working for God. Amen. He wants to get your mind. Amen. From watching and praying. Amen. He wants to get your mind off of your family. Amen. When whatever he can do. Amen. He'll send whoever he wants to send. Amen. But I've got news for the devil. Amen. I got news for Satan. I got news for his spirits of darkness. Amen. That I am a child of the living God. His royal blood flows through my veins. I've got the Holy Ghost with power. Amen. And I got God living on the inside of me. So that means that I can speak. Amen. To the devil. I can speak to the storm and say peace be still because I have the peace speaker living on the inside of me. Amen. I can speak, amen, to my sickness and say, amen, I am healed. Amen. Because he liveth in me. Nevertheless, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight. Come on, let's shout on to God. Come on, church, let's shout on to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's give him another clap. Hallelujah, Brother Watson. Come on. Come on, let's shout. Amen. As Brother Watson comes, let's worship. As Brother Watson comes, let's exalt him as Brother Watson comes. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I'm going to Job, and then I'm going to uh, over to Pilman. But in Job chapter 37, it says, in verse number 7, it says, He sealeth up the hands of every man, that all men may know his work. Then, then, <clears throat> then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh uh, whirlwinds and the coal out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given. And the uh, breath of the waters to uh, straighten. Also by... Uh, also by... Wall, wa watering, yeah, watering. He uh, welleth the. Uh, I can't even see to read. Where if the uh, things, thick clouds, he um, scatters, sca scatters his uh, bright clouds, and and he is turned. Uh, and it is turned around about by the uh, cancels that they may do whatsoever he commandeth. Them upon the face of, of the world in the, in the earth. He causes it to come for this reason. Whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. Amen. 
God has got it all. I'm, I just want to focus on verse 7 right now, and then we're going to uh, Philemon. He sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may show know his works. All right. I'm going to read this first verse. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our, our brother, and to Philemon, our dearly beloved um, and, and fellow labor. You may be seated. We're looking at a story here in Philemon that uh, Paul wrote this letter to Philemon. Amen. Concerning Onephesus. And Onephesus was a slave. He, he was a runaway. He had, he had taken and, and robbed, you know, his, his, his master and, and flew into Rome. And there's where Paul and, and, and Onibus got together. Amen. And Paul won him to the Lord. And here, uh, anytime there's a, a, a runaway slave in those days, they're in danger in their life to be killed. Because they, they, if you got one they can't do nothing with and he wants to escape, especially if they're going to steal the things that they have, you know, and then take off. They ain't got no intentions of ever coming back. They're trying to get uh, something from their master to do whatever they want to do and get out from under him. I'll tell you what, people has to have a heart to love God. Amen. Regardless of whatever it is. And, and I want to entitle this today, you know, uh, God wants everybody to know that he's working. And God works, the Bible says, in mysterious ways to perform wonders. And here we got the runaway slave, okay? He's the thief and all that. And Paul wants him to the Lord. And when in winning him to the Lord, he, he, he had to teach uh, Onephus some things. He had to show him some things and some principles and some things that God would have him to do. And, and and so he took and, and 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 worked with him and got him in a place where, you know, he was he was a living for God. He was a working for God, and he would have been a great asset to Paul. And Paul said he would be a great access to him. And so Paul really would like to keep him, but he didn't want, he didn't keep him because it would have been wrong for Paul to keep him because he's a runaway slave. You see, and Onephesus needs to do something about that. He needs to be able to make, go and make corrections. He don't need to uh, just forget about it. Say, Lord, forgive me. No, that ain't the way it works. You go and make it right with your master, and then, then you are free. Then your sins are forgiven. And then you can worship God. And then you can be right with God. And we have to realize that. Hey, we're not our own. We're bought with a price, church. He paid the price for us. And Paul here is writing to Philemon. And listen to some of the characteristics that he said concerning. Uh, he said, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing, he, hearing of thine love and faith, which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. That the... Uh, Constellation of thy faith may, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the bowels of thy saints are refreshed by thee, brother. This is what we Paul talking to, to Philemon in this letter. And he's going to send this letter to uh, Philemon concerning Onephesus. And he, he lets him know where he's, you know, how people, how he is and the characteristics of him. You know, that's like a child of God. You know, and Philemon was a child of God. If he had been uh, someone out in the world and not in the church, you know, why, he, he, he probably wouldn't have done anything but done something to him. 
and, and probably had, had him killed because for the simple reason, you know, what he done, stealing and taking off, you know. But, you know, God works in mysterious ways. I, I think I've done said that, but he, he works in mysterious ways to perform wonders. And this omnipotent, uh, uh, amen, he, he, you know, he could have just uh, uh, kept on going, you know, and not, not uh, do anything as far as going back. Well, if he'd have done that, where would he be today? He wouldn't be where Paul brought him to. Paul brought him to a salvation plan. He brought him to the uh, to what it takes to live for God, and, and 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 placed him into it. Amen. I know that you know the scripture don't say nothing about it, but he he baptized him in Jesus' name because that's what he did always converts and you know and 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 in filling of the Holy Ghost. We know that he he repented. But there were some things that was lacking in his life. Yet it, he had to go and straighten out. And so when he went, uh, uh, take, took this letter back to Onephesus, you know, Paul had the confidence in him. that, And he let Onephesus know that, hey, you're not going back to someone that's going to mistreat you and punish you, but you're going back with the attitude, you're going back with the spirit, that, that, that you're going to be a benefit to, to Philemon, your, your, your boss. You're going to be a benefit to him. Yeah, amen. And so uh, this, this, this was all said in this letter, uh, you know. And so... <clears throat> about to lose my... <clears throat> yeah, I need to. I've already strained it out. <clears throat> Tonight, I just got to work out on it. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway... That's what we've got to do, church. We, we've, got to, we've got to put the things of God in perspective. Amen. We can't, we can't let things go undone. Because let me tell you something. The devil, he, he's, he, knows, he knows where you're at. He knows what you're doing. And he sees, sees your actions. And when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you know, the, you know when you, if, you, if you go out of this world, amen, uh, you know, and, the, and, and you go in that kind of shape, in that kind of condition, you know what's going to happen? The devil's going to point his finger right in your face and he's going to tell you that this, this you've done and you, and, and, there, and you know what the Lord's going to have to do? Huh? He's going to have to say it's written. It's nothing he can do. He's going to, he's going to have to pass judgment because the Word of God... It's the word. He's going to have to, he's going to have to pass judgment. So we don't want to let anything hinder us to the church. They're going, going to heaven. Because the Lord's done so much to us. And Paul made it clear to Philemon that if Onephesus owes anything, he said, put it on my account, I'll pay it. Right. Amen. That's what Jesus done for us. That's what Jesus done for us when He went on the cross. He gave His all. And why can't we give our all for Jesus? Huh? We can. We can give Him everything. And we should give Him everything. Because He deserves it all. He deserves all the praise and the glory and the honor that we can give Him. Amen. Amen. God is a good God, church. All right. It goes on down in verse 20. He says, Yet, uh, Yea, brethren, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in the o obedience, I write unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Huh? Huh? He'll just go just a little bit farther on than what's necessary. And that's what that's where it comes in at, church. That's where the rubber meets the road. You go the whole mile. If they asked you to go one mile, you go two miles. Amen. If God wants you to, uh, to do anything, go the full extent. Go all the way. Don't keep nothing back. Don't hold nothing back. Don't let anything slip. Amen. That's the God that we serve. 
Amen. A great God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we don't know how God's working. How did Paul know that Onephesus was a runaway slave? It didn't matter, church. It don't matter who out there and what somebody's done. It doesn't matter. What matters is what goes on now after. Hereafter. That's right. And we have to realize that. Amen. So it's like God work. It's like God do his thing. And, and, and hey, we don't, we don't, we're not no judge. We're not no judge. God's a judge. And he passes the judgment. But we don't want people to fail, do we? We don't want people to fail. So therefore, what we gotta do, we gotta, we gotta consider every soul. We gotta consider everybody out there. Don't matter what what they've done. It doesn't matter where they're at. It doesn't matter what they've got into. It doesn't matter oh, how far down in sin they are. Amen. We need to show them a respect, a love for God, that they will uh, just desire what you got. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. If we do that, you know what? We're going to be a light. We're going to be a light. On the hill. Amen. Where everybody can see us. Amen. If you're just a light for the church, you're just a light, not at home, not abroad, nowhere else. If that's the only light you got, your light's dim. It is. It's dim. And you need to be a light everywhere you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Regardless, regardless, amen, what comes your way. Everything that happens in your life is for a purpose and a reason. Amen. God, God's purpose, God, God worked with Onephesus, didn't he? Amen. He saved Onephesus. He brought him into the church body. He put in, he, you know, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was baptized in Jesus' name. I know that because of what the church, scriptures teach. Amen. 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 God's a good God, ain't he? Come on, let's shout unto God. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Let every man everywhere shall praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother Eric. Amen. It's this time. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord as Brother Eric comes. I can be loud without the microphone. Uh, I'm going to use it. I appreciate the Lord uh, giving you confirmation and other testimonies and other things that people speak. Uh, and it is mysterious how God works, how that He transforms our life. Uh, I'm appreciative to the Lord for the things that He's done, uh, for the transforming power of His Word. Um, you know, lately, I'm just going to be transparent a little bit because I think that's what we need. We don't need people trying to hide problems, situations. We need to help one another. And in the midst of a trial, I was sitting on my daughter's swing. And I felt like the Lord put two different sets of Scripture into my heart. And the first one, if you'll turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. It's a very powerful thing. The next one. John chapter 3 verses 19 through 21. And this is the condemnation 
that the light has come into the world and that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, they that are wrought in God. And I'm not going to give you a fancy title. I want it to be substance. And I just want to title it In the Dark. You all may be seated. My Bible is very specific about certain things. Before I got into truth, I church taught all over the place. Everybody has their own thing with the Bible. But some distinctions that my Bible makes are light, dark, right, wrong, heaven, and hell. And folks, I'm here to tell you today that there's nothing that you're going to do that the Lord does not see. Proverbs 15 and 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. In Scripture, to me, the longer that I walk with God, it means more. The more I can remember, the more I can apply to my life. And there is no way that you can outrun God. You can deceive me. You may deceive your pastor. But what you do at home, the Lord sees when we think that nobody's around, He's there. When we think that we can sit idly by, He's there. If we look at Ezekiel in that time, it talks about the abominations that were going on in the land. All of these different things, I'm sad to say, you still see it. They were worshiping the sun. There was violence in the land. People did all manner of things that you see and worse today. Seems like they've just taken it. And rather than try to hide it, it seems like they've flown it. But we're here. And we're seeing what people do in the dark. So I'm going to do something a little bit unorthodox. It's funny how we, we kind of rehearse things in our mind. Should we do this? Should we not do this? I'm not going to turn them off but I'm going to turn off just enough that it's murky. It's not as clearly visible. Now, if I turned it off all the way, in a moment, we'd have murmuring. We'd have complaining. We'd have backsliding. We'd have people trying to scramble, trying to pick up all manner of things that they once held dear. But if we turn the lights back on, There's perfect clarity. You know, I'm not a shouter. At least not yet. But these things feel so pressed in me. You know, the Lord speaks about people who worship Him with their lips. But their heart is far from Him. Folks, in Ezekiel and many other books of the Bible, I know I'm children's ministry. It talks about passing kids through the fire. Most times, we probably just skip over that as another section of reading. But what does that mean? If you research passing through the fire, Moloch was a god that they worshipped. But how did they worship that god? They set their kids on fire. Now, I've not seen anybody do that today, but how many kids are we just letting slip on by? All right. Complacency is almost as bad. And that's something that I don't want to see. I don't want to see people be complacent. I don't want to replace the I-D-O-L with I-D-L-E. I don't want to be idle in the church. I don't want to set up anything that will cause one of these kids to fail. And it's not just kids. It's our families. It's our loved ones. It's the backslider. Brother Watson said, there's nothing you've done that you can't come back from. As long as there's breath in your body. That's what matters. So, if I had left the lights off and we'd sit there, that's what the world is. Folks, there are people who don't know truth. And honestly, they wouldn't know. 
I am thankful for Phyllis Smith. Phyllis Smith stood in the gap for me when none of you all probably knew who I was. And that's what we have to be for everybody else. I don't want to go a day and not pray. I don't want to go a day. I don't want to let somebody pass on the street and then be destined for hell and me not stop. I mean, folks, what are we doing? That's who we're called to be. Every single person that we pass by is a soul. Child, elder, whoever they are. I can't look on anybody with regard. The Lord knows the inside of my heart. The Lord knows if I'm hiding in the dark. When I talked about the darkness, and I talked about the different things that people leave behind, too often, you know, it's funny. When we think about the Bible, there's one theme, and every parable really applies to that one theme. You know, when we talk about darkness, I could talk about another parable about the seeds. Jesus told us not to be entangled with this life. He told us not to care so much that we lost the focus of our testimony and of our witness to other people. Are we laying down our cross? I want to pick up my cross every day because that's what the Word tells me to do. I don't want to leave my cross in the dark. I don't want the Lord to look at me one day, Eric, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? Well, Lord, because I was hiding in the dark. I didn't want to step out there in faith. I didn't want to go that extra mile. Lord, I was tired. Lord, I don't talk to people. Whatever excuse we've got, I have them too. And this is the change that we need to implement. Folks, it doesn't matter. I said folks a lot. Never say folks. It doesn't matter if you're backslider, sinner, or everywhere in between. James calls him the father of lights. Isaiah called him the everlasting father. Folks at home, there's not three gods. That one is Jesus. I don't know who you pray to, but if you were not praying to Jesus, Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and earth. Jesus is the Holy Ghost baptizer. And not only the Holy Ghost, but with fire. I want that fire to burn away any complacency that I've got, any complacency that you've got, because I have family that's lost. It's not enough to just come and to sit to do these things. We have to be out there. I had a discussion with somebody before church and we was talking about church as a whole and probably what they did back then. You know, when they went in, they expected God to move. They expected signs, miracles, and wonders. You know, this is not just a Bible study. This is not a Wednesday night. This may be the last night you get. And God is not a respecter of persons. I've been in the world. I've done things. I've been to concerts. I've been places I shouldn't have been. All of that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is right now. You can fix it right now. You can change your way of thinking right now. So what do I do? Brother Douglas, if I've been hiding in the dark. Repent. Repent daily. Step out in faith. Read the word. Cling to somebody who knows how to pray. Stand in the gap for somebody else. It's a laundry list of things that we could be doing. Time is too short. Time is running out. If we have dropped these things. You know, the Bible speaks. I pray this over myself. Every day since I learned how to do this. 
When you flip to Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the whole armor of God. I don't want to leave my armor laying in the corner. I don't want to leave my cross laying in the corner. And I don't want my room to be so dark that I can't find it. I love the Lord. I truly appreciate everything that He does in my life. Because honestly, you know, we talk about grace, we talk about mercy. Every service. We say the words. I don't ever just want to say the words. I want to feel the depth of those words. Because if I feel it, and I let it transform me, how can I help somebody else? And that's what it's about. That's, that's everything. I'm going to end with a story of a man that I know. And this is a true story. Two different things you can take away from this story. This man, when he grew up, he searched for God. He was in the dark. He searched for the Lord. He went place to place to place to place to place. And everybody has their hands. Churches, oh, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, this and that and the other. Whatever they say. This man found truth by the grace of God. That man went to witness to his dad, who's a very faithful member of his church. And the dad, he let him go on, you know, give his testimony and how the Lord's worked and all of the things that the Bible really says. And you know, and I talked about passing people, passing kids through the fire. Folks, complacency is just as bad. Lack of prayer is just as bad. Lack of fasting is just as bad. And this man, when he was talking to his dad, he was, and he was startled by the reaction. The man said, son, you may have been lost that whole time because I didn't go pray with you. What a shame it would be to let our kids and to let our lost stay out there I don't want that. I don't want to be in the dark. And if you let, if you allow it, if you're in the dark, the enemy will keep you there. Folks, we have to see. There you go, folks. We have to seek with everything that we have. We have to scratch. We have to claw through trial, through tribulation, through up, through down. I don't ever want to give up. The same shall endure to the end. And that's what I'm looking for. That's worth it all. My family's worth it all. Your family's worth it all. Strangers are worth it all. I think we have to get to the place to where we humble ourselves enough to go that extra mile. Hallelujah. Come on, let's shout one more time to the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we exalt you. God, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. I am th I'm thinking as Brother Eric was mentioned in the dark, and it made me think of uh, years ago when uh, we hadn't been in, in church very long, and there was a singing group, and they, they sung a song called Getting Used to the Dark. And, and there's too many people today Amen. They're getting used to the dark to the point that they're satisfied to just live in that dim light, Brother brother Eric. That's, they're satisfied to live. They've got just enough light to feel like they're okay, but they're not willing to come out of the dark. They're used to it. Amen. That's never acceptable before God. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. We're going to ask Brother Markham to come at this time. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Let's shout until, the, until Brother Markham gets up here. Let's worship him, amen, with everything that we are in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's give that to the Lord. Amen. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated today. Amen. First Peter chapter number 5. Verse number 7 says, Cast 
all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Amen. I want to tell the devil today that I'm not worrying anymore. Look over at your neighbor and say, I'm not worrying anymore. Amen. So oftentimes in our lives, especially here lately, we are overwhelmed by worry and we're overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. Amen. As the pressures of the world are on us more now than ever before. Amen. We are, we are uh, every day overwhelmed by the things and the pressures of this life. But the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I will tell you the reason why I'm not worrying and being anxious and, and have full of anxiety is because I have the great opportunity to bring all my cares to the Lord. Amen. I can make my request known to God. Amen. I want to tell you today you may be coming here carrying a burden. You may be coming here carrying weight, the weights of this world, but you have the opportunity to let your request be known unto God. Amen. When we let the request be made known unto God, the Bible says, and verse number 7 says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts, and not only your hearts, but it's going to keep your minds through Jesus Christ. I want to tell you today, your heart may be overwhelmed. Amen. Your heart may be, be, be troubled today, and your mind may be going around in circles like a whirlwind. But I will tell you, when you cast your cares on the Lord, and you let your request be made known to God, God, God's going to give you peace beyond your, your capability to even fathom in your mind and he's going to touch your heart. He's going to keep your heart. And the Bible says that he is, and, and the NLT says that he's going to guard your heart. I want to tell you today that God has got a guard on your heart. God has got a shield on you to keep the devil from penetrating and doing things to your mind and your heart. God's got us in the palm of his hands. There is nothing that the world can put on you that God doesn't got a remedy for. There's nothing that you're going through that God cannot solve. We serve a God that's able to do whatever you need Him to do. Verse number 8 says, finally brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I don't have to worry today because I got my mind on what's true. I'm not thinking about the lies of the devil the world. The Bible says that the, the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. I want to tell you today that uh, he is the father of all lies. And the devil is going to look at you and tell you all manner of lies. And I will tell you that the church is believing the lies of the devil. But I will tell you it's time now. Finally, it's time for us to get our mind on the truth. It's finally to stop believing the lies of the devil. You may be believing the things the devil's been telling you and it's, there's no hope and you're never going to get out of what you're going through but you need to get your mind upon the things that are true and the things that are honest and the things that are just and the things that are pure when you get your mind on the things that are impure, you're going to be thinking about things, amen, uh, when you're thinking about things that are impure, it creates a, an opportunity for the devil to put worry in your mind and worry in your heart. If you're thinking about hateful things, if, but you, you, you will automatically start worrying. But when you start thinking about the things that are lovely and you start thinking about the things that are good, of a good report, for who shall believe the report of the Lord and in whom is the arm of the Lord being revealed? I want to tell you today, we need to get our minds on God and we get our minds on the good report. Hey, I want to tell you, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. The doctor may, may, may have gave you two weeks to live. The doctor may have said you've got cancer and you're going to die. But I come today to tell you that his report says you're going to live. Yeah. Man, let's give him some glory today. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we need to think on these things. When you get our minds on the things that's full of virtue and pray, virtuous things. And if you can't praise when you're doing it, and if you can't praise while you're thinking it, and if you can't praise when you're doing that activity, if there ain't no praise in it, that gives an opportunity for you to have, or have worry in your mind and your heart. I'm not going to worry today because Colossians chapter number 15, uh, 3 and verse number 15 says, let the people 
peace of God rule in your heart. Rule in your heart. I want to tell you it's time to let the Lord rule in your heart. So many times you let the devil rule in your heart. You let let the devil rule in your mind. You let the devil rule in your home. You let the devil rule in your activities. You let let the devil rule and reign in your whole life. We need to let the, the peace of God rule in our hearts to which we are also called in one body. That lets me know that when we let God rule in our hearts and we become unified in the body of Christ, we don't have to worry because we're called into this one body. We're all working together, one focus and one purpose. And we, our purpose is to be thankful. I want to tell you today that we walk in peace when we are thankful. We walk in, in freedom when we are thankful. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 26 and verse number 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, on, on thee, because he trusteth in him. I don't, I'm not going to worry anymore today because I trust in the Lord. I'm not going to worry in the Lord because my mind is stayed on him. My mind is on the Lord. Psalms chapter number 4 verse number 8 says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep for thou uh, Lord only make us me dwell in safety. I don't have to worry because I have peace in my mind. I'm able to rest and have peace and sleep at night because I know I'm in the hands of the Lord. I know that I'm going to dwell in safety. I want to tell you today you may feel like when you're in the middle of the night and there's things coming against you when you lie down. But I want to tell you today God gives the church peace that you can lay down and sleep. You may be up all night worrying about what's going on in your family members' lives. You may be up all night worrying about what's going to happen in the future. You may be worrying about this and you're worrying about that. But I want to tell you the Bible says that he's going to allow you to lay down in peace and sleep for he makes you to dwell in safety. He's going to make you dwell in in a safe place. There is a safety when you're in the arms of the Lord. There's safety in the house of God. There's safety in the house of God. There's safety in the church. There's safety in the community of the saints. Amen. You may feel like you're overwhelmed by fear in the middle of the night, but God's going to give you safety. You may be worrying about if God's going to provide for your needs. I know others may be people that that, that they have been dealing with this pandemic of COVID-19, and it has affected everything about them. Maybe you've been laid off from your job. Maybe you're in the middle of an of uncertain time and you don't know how, how if you're going to make it through but I want to tell you God it will supply all of your needs Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says this but God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I want to tell you he's going to supply all of your need no matter what you need he's got everything in full supply he's not like Walmart or you don't walk up and they ain't got what you need as soon as you go to God he's got everything you need and ever need he's freely going to supply it you may need the Holy Ghost he's got it you may need deliverance he's got it you may need peace and encouragement he's got it you may need the money to pay your electric bill I want to tell you God's got it amen amen Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6 verse 33 says this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to tell you today, if you seek God first. Everything you need is going to start adding. Everything is going to start adding. You may get your calculator and it don't add up. But when you start putting God first, everything is going to start adding in. Amen. The things are going to start adding in. And you're, going to know, you're not going to know exactly how God's performing it. You don't know exactly how it's going to happen. But it's just things are start adding it, falling into place. He's going to start adding it unto you. He's going to put it in your, in your pocket. He's going to
going to supply your need. There's so many times I, I've been worrying how I'm going to pay my bills, but I put it in the hands of the Lord, and somehow, some way, it showed up right on time. Amen. Because I put God first. Amen. I I, I, I I gave to the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that if you that you have robbed the Lord with your tithes and your offerings, He said you bring all your tithes in the storehouse that they might be meat in the house and see and prove me. Now when I open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. Put God first, and you'll see God add. If you don't put God first, you'll see the devil start subtracting things out of your life. He'll subtract your peace and your joy and your finances. But when you put God first and you start giving, amen, press down. The Lord Bible says, give it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Goes on, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for itself. Amen. Amen. For its own thing, sufficient unto the uh, to the day. For the day is evil thereof. I want to tell you, we're living in an, an evil day. Amen. We're living in a day when you feel like your feet is going to be stumbling. But I want to tell you, Proverbs chapter number three, verse number twenty-three says this: that the. Uh, then shall thou walk in the way safety, safely, and thou foot shall not stumble. I will tell you today, I don't have to worry about falling because I know that God has got me in the ways of righteousness, in the ways of God. And when I'm walking in the paths that God has placed for me to walk in, He's not going to allow my foot to stumble. He's not going to allow me to give and fall to the way side, but he's going to allow me to walk firmly and boldly in the Lord. Verse number 24 of chapter number 3 of Proverbs says this, when thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lay down, and thy sleep shall be, free, shall be sweet. I want to tell you today, no matter what you're dealing with, amen, no matter what you're going with, through right now, God has his hand on you. Let's stand all over the house. God has his hand on you. No matter what you come in, in the house of God with today, you may be worrying, you may be fretting about what's going on and how the, your future is going to line up, but I want to tell you today God's getting ready to steady your foot, he's, got, he's getting ready to steady your step, and you're going to do the will of God John chapter 14, verse number 27 says, Peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto thee. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Amen. Today, I want to tell you today, God has peace in the middle of the storm. God has joy when you feel like you have lost all your joy. Amen. I want to tell you, the devil today, that let's all raise our hands to the Lord right now. Amen. You need to tell the devil, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to let the devil dictate and control me because I got my mind on Jesus. Jesus. I got my mind on the things that are true. I got my mind on the things that are honest. I got my mind on the things that are of a good report. In the name of Jesus. I'm not going to worry. God's going to supply my need. I'm not going to worry. God's got it all in control. In the name of Jesus, God's got it all in control. Well, let's clap our hands to Jesus now. Oh, 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 is doing here. I appreciate what the messages, all four messages that have been brought forth here tonight. And I truly believe that God spoke to us each and every time. 
I truly believe that. Amen. We are going to press forward. Amen. Praise God. We, through the help of God, are going to begin to step into new realms. In God's Spirit, we're going to begin to press this church forward in outreach. We're going to begin to see God add souls to this church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to begin to work. Each of us should begin to work towards teaching a home Bible study. Amen. We're going to try to do the things that are necessary. There's not a soul in here. There's not a soul in here that cannot, if you will focus your attention, get a Bible study. Amen. You could sit across somebody's kitchen table and begin to break the bread of life under them. Amen. And the Word of God will not return to God void. It will do what it was intended to do. Amen. If each and every one of us begins to move forward in God. Amen. If we'll begin to pray. If we'll begin to fast. If we'll begin to truly seek the Lord. Amen. And find the day. Amen. When you're going down the street. When you're sitting at the car wash. Amen. If you're down at the filling station. Whatever it be. Amen. When you see somebody else filling up their gas tank. Why don't you just invite them to the house of God. We're going to start getting some cards and stuff printed out. My wife has already got some. We're going to start passing. People are going to know where Calvary Tabernacle Church is at. People are going to know where Heritage of Truth Church is at. I'm telling you. People need to know where they can find salvation and they're going to find salvation here. Amen. 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 Praise God. There needs to be a stirring in our hearts. There needs to be, there needs to be a, an uprooting of our old ways. Amen. And beginning to reach out into the darkness. We need to begin to save them, amen, from the gates of hell. Praise God. We need to be reaching the souls, amen, that are crying out to God. And I'm telling you, there are people all around us that are crying out, God send somebody. God, let somebody tell it. Let somebody show me. Let somebody reveal it. Let somebody, hallelujah, tell me. Amen. And I want to be that person. And you ought to be that person. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got the words of life. We got the words of power. We got the words of anointing. Amen. And we got the only God. Hallelujah. Who can save? Hallelujah. Who can keep? Hallelujah. And who can deliver? Amen. Praise God. It's time for us to start stirring up the gift. I didn't mean to preach. It's time for us to start stirring up the gift of God that, that's in us. Amen. God didn't call us into this thing just to show up here on Sunday. God didn't just call us into this thing to just show up here on Wednesday. Amen. This has got to be 24-7. Amen. This has got to be when you wake up in the morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Hallelujah. When we close our eyes at night, we ought to say, God, I've done something. Amen. God, I prayed for somebody. God, I invited someone. God, I touched somebody's life. Amen. With the Spirit of God. That's what He's called us to do. And church, I'm telling you, Amen. If we'll begin to implement what God has called us to do, by the end of the year, this church will be filled up and we'll be looking for another place. Amen. If we get out of that humdrum uh, ideal of, of a kumbaya and all that stuff and we begin to entertain the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord will fall in this place. Amen. As we begin to lift up our voices unto God and begin to worship Him without fear and without favor, if we'll begin to lift Him up higher. God, I want to lift you up higher. God, I want to lift you up higher. God, can I lift you up a little higher? I'm telling you, God is going to move. God is going to just. God is going to deliver. God is going to say amen hallelujah I volunteer I volunteer use me use me use me we need to start stirring it up amen in our lives amen and then we need to keep stirring Praise God, we don't want to just stir it up for a little while amen just let it settle down amen we got to keep it stirring because when it's stirring it rises Amen. Hallelujah. It don't sink when you stir. It rises. We need to stir up the Spirit of God. Amen. He gave us the Holy Ghost. Why? To be witnesses. That's the main thing that He said. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost to be a witness of me. That's what it's about. Amen. We need to start doing what God's called us to do. Amen. It's more than just being saved. And we got to be saved we got to save ourselves. Amen. 
But, you know, the old song is bringing in the sheaves. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to. I don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go empty-handed. Amen. I want to say, Lord, amen, i done what you said to me to do. You know what, what Jesus said? Amen. He said, he said I, I've kept them all, Father. He said, I didn't lose any of them. Amen. We're going to do what God's called us to do. That's what he's called us to do. And I'm telling you what, we'll be a happy church. We're a happy people, yes we are. We're a happy people, yes.